historically, in terms of criticism, and I know this very well, that there's a tradition which has either tried to completely ignore the presence of blackness yes. in the play, you know, Coleridge yeah. you know, famously yeah. denied that Othello could be black. It was just, it seemed to him <laughs> utterly impossibility. And Coleridge said this. But then what's interesting is, I suppose, over the last couple of decades, people have, have talked more about race, but almost seen that as a, as a negative representation in the play which I guess is what Peter Sellers was concerned about, that he couldn't really find something more uh, progressive yeah, or more yeah, yeah. redemptive in it. I guess that's what you're trying to find in terms of this piece of work. And, yeah, and also it was a very uh, uh, classically trained black actors love it because they get to be a star on stage in Shakespeare. And that there's no other place for that to happen. Mm. So it's done over and over again, pretty much the same way with the voice, with the James Earl Jones voice and so on. But <clears throat> otherwise, you know, under sort of an evil Caligula type, you know, um, uh, enemy. Um, but still, I always thought, it was just reading it and thinking about the, a performance the way I thought it ought to be. Now, the, the question of blackness, I was looking early on, when does Desdemona call him a Moor? And she doesn't. She calls him a Lord. Other people say, you know, all that stuff that Iago says about, I don't know, nipples and... <laughs> I was very dismissive of Iago. As I said, I... Um, refused to do the play unless Peter permitted me to get rid of Iago altogether. <laughs> Out. <laughs> because he's everywhere. He's talking constantly. Nobody's telling him the truth. He's manipulating everybody. He's gobbling up the play. And no one can just live. And a friend of mine said, no, no, you can't take Iago out. That is the important role. I said, why did he call it Iago? Why is he called it Othello? But anyway, it was so liberating in the writing and in the imagination to get rid of the character that was manipulating everybody, to see what it would be like, what would they say to one another if he wasn't there? And of course, particularly, if they were all dead and there was nothing, there was everything to learn because it is eternal, and there was nothing to lose. Because I should say that the, the play is basically set in, afterlife is the wrong word, but there's a sense in which they're in an eternal present after the action. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's about Desdemona, um, the, the serving maid known as Barbary, which we should speak about in a moment, and Othello confronting each other and talking, as it were, about what's happened.